in a strangely appropriate way, uh, Cecilia, my friend who I love talking with, and I know many of you like to hear um, her thoughts, unfortunately cannot join us today because she had a work emergency, so she could not join us live. Um, maybe she'll be able to pop in at the end, um, but if she does not, um, I'll, next time I talk to Cecilia, in the very least, we will discuss if you want to send in questions for her in regards to this SP stuff, she gladly will answer them. And she apologized for not being able to make it live today. Um, so yeah, let's get rolling. And uh, the way we usually start these group sessions is we just kind of do like a nice grounding type of exercise for a couple minutes um, that usually kind of puts us in the right frame of mind for everything that comes after. Um, so let's do that. Uh, you know, whether you're sitting or lying down or walking, listening in your car, what, whatever you're doing, just, you know, if, if you can, just spend the next minute or two just kind of relaxing yourself physically as best you can and also relaxing yourself mentally. Now, obviously, that's easier said than done a lot of the time. And so what I'm asking you to do here, this grounding exercise is grounding because we're, we're just putting the intention that the body is relaxing, the mind hopefully is relaxing, but there is zero pressure for it to relax. Zero pressure. So in other words, you might be sitting down, relaxing but you might have all these thoughts in your head, you know, about what we're going to be talking about or something that you have to do later today or something that happened three hours ago. That's totally fine. Totally fine. Those thoughts can be there. Or your body might physically feel uncomfortable or whatever, maybe physically you just feel tired or, you know, you're in some pain. It's totally fine. Totally fine. These next two hours, is, we're coming from a very non-judgmental space, and we're going to do our best not to judge our thoughts, our feelings, what's happening in our body critically. We can look at them. We can judge them in that way. We can be open and aware of the thoughts and how we're feeling. That's good. But we don't, we're not going to judge them, hopefully, as critically as we usually do. So much of this inner work or whatever you want to call it. I like calling it inner work. So much of this inner work is just about, oh, my body doesn't feel good. Oh, that feeling's really uncomfortable in my chest or my, the pit of my stomach, you know? Oh, I feel like my, my head feels like it's just racing. My throat's tightening. Oh, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that feeling. So much of this stuff is just about seeing the feeling being there. We don't have to like it, but it's there. So maybe we can learn in some strange way to like it, or at least to accept it when it's there. Because generally speaking, when we accept how our body is acting, and work with that instead of fighting against it or saying, oh, I hate how I feel right now. I hate what I'm thinking right now. If we instead say, oh, I feel okay with this right now, this is happening. It's okay. I'm okay. I'm alive. It's okay. When we do that, things smooth out in our life. Generally speaking, it doesn't mean it's going to be all roses and ponies all the time, but it means that it's easier for us to feel better when we accept these passing uncomfortable feelings, these stressful thoughts, when we allow them to be there momentarily or there for a few minutes or there sometimes for a few hours or there for a couple of days. Can we judge them less harshly? Can we see that perhaps they're telling us something about our situation? Can we use them as guidance 
instead of creating an impediment by them being there. The reason we talk so much about feeling into feelings is because it seems a lot more sane usually to feel into feelings that are coming up and that we are so scared of when they're coming up. We're so scared of those feelings. We've been scared of some of these feelings seemingly since we were kids. When we actually start to look at them, feel them, it changes things. And I think if you're on this call, you realize that this has a lot to do with emotional healing work and SP situations. I have no idea what, you know, the next hour and a half, two hours is going to be like. Um, part of me is very reticent to talk about SP stuff uh, in a group setting like this. Um, but I think it will be beneficial in some way. And one reason I think will be beneficial, besides just the commonalities that so many people share that I think we will see more of when we have a session like this. But another big reason I think will be beneficial is you'll start to feel more comfortable feeling into your feelings. And it might seem and feel really uncomfortable to feel into our feelings some of the time, especially at first. But in my experiences and opinion, it is much less uncomfortable than not feeling into them. That's important in my opinion. And so I, I hope in the very least that point resonates with you a little bit more, um, you know, by being here for this session. Um, yeah, in a way, there's not really much more I want to say in regards to, to that opening and grounding uh, exercise. Um, you know, if Cecilia was here with us, I, I was going to have her talk a little bit about just different ways of shifting your thoughts and your feelings and um, you know, letting go of, of the self-judgment, but she's not here right now. And so I think I'm really going to just do what I always do, which is just, um, let it flow and see what people have to say. And there's, I encourage you to say stuff if you want, but you don't have to say anything. We can just sit here. I mean that. <laughs> um, that's the place we're coming from, is that we can just be here. You know? So, uh, yeah, if people want to write things in, in the chat, questions into the chat, um, she, she is saying my head actually does hurt. Excellent. Good, so, good observation. Um, if people want to write questions in, they can, if people don't write, want to write questions in or, or ask me questions, you can unmute yourself and ask me a question on audio, or you can unmute and, uh, video yourself, you know, turn everything on and see me. And, you know, I can see you if you want to do that. Again, this is being recorded. So other people are going to see this outside of the session. So we're um, trying to be more mindful of, um, people being able to have their privacy if they want. <sighs> One thing that's fun about these, um, free sessions we have more people join because there's more people here there's less interaction <laughs> less people usually want to talk when there's a larger group it's interesting 
Um, yeah, so if anybody wants to say anything at any time, um, they can. Someone has a question, um, Tim, I'm new to your work. Where does one start regarding manifesting money? Um, that's not SP related directly, but that's totally fine for me to answer right now. Um, money work, manifesting money is one of money is a very interesting thing. <laughs> I actually have a book coming out. Um, I'm not going to give you a date because it's, I've given dates for the last two years and none of, I have not hit any of them. Um, I have a book coming out about manifesting money or more specifically feeling better about money. Where one should start, in my opinion, in regards to manifesting money is feeling better about money. Most people subconsciously, one could say imaginatively, uh, feel terrible about money. And if we can learn to feel less terrible about money, um, then generally speaking, it flows into our life more easily. I know it seems very cliche to say flows, but it's true. Like money, abundance, things we need, things we want. If we feel better about them coming to us, if we feel better about money, if we feel better about the circulation of money in and out of our life, money tends to come to us more easily. Um, and that is something that, uh, like I said, I have a book coming out that's going to discuss this in much more detail, but I have... Um, a couple seminars on my playlist section of my YouTube channel. And they, it talks about uh, a simple way to, to start feeling better about money and manifest more money in your life. And it also talks about a more advanced way to work on manifesting money, which involves the success indicator. There's a bunch of videos about the success indicator in one of my playlists as well. Um, but one thing I would say is I have, I did a YouTube course last year um, about inner supply. And that, again, this is one of my playlists on my YouTube channel. So if you look on my YouTube channel on the playlist, you're going to see something about inner supply. Um, that's a, it's a pretty long, I think there's like 15 or maybe even 20 videos in that playlist talking about manifesting concepts coming from the viewpoint of trying to feel better about our finances. Um, one of the more interesting concepts and something that's really hit home for me more this past year, and I've been doing money work like regarding like manifesting money, that kind of stuff for almost 10 years. That's why I got into, or one of the big reasons I got into the law of attraction because I didn't like my job. Um, and I didn't feel good about money. And these ideas really have helped me out a lot. And you're going to, you keep on learning. The more, the more money work you do, the more you feel, the, the more you learn about money and your relationship with it changes. One thing that's really hit home uh, that I talk about in that inner supply series though, is, is Joel Goldsmith, who's a great manifesting teacher. Um, he's got a book called Invisible Supply. And one of the things he talks about in that book is that supply is an inner quality that we bring out in the same way that like um, something like honesty or integrity, like those are inner qualities. Goldsmith says supply is an inner quality that we bring out. So um, yeah, those are some, some good places you could start uh, in regards to money. Um, Kate says Richard Dots has some insights on money. He absolutely does. Um, Dollars Flow to Me Easily. Yep, Dollars Flow to Me Easily is a great book about this stuff. Richard Dots is one of my favorite writers. And my favorite money book, I, I still think probably my favorite money book in regards to this money manifesting stuff is a book by Richard Dots, only available on Kindle, not, not in paperback form, called Banned Money Secrets. Banned Money Secrets. That's another good place to turn. 
Um, but yeah, money works super interesting when it comes to this stuff. Cause, uh, you know, I've had the pleasure of, of working with people and being coached by people, um, about money work and it's crazy. You know, you can be at it for a while. Like, I, like I said, I've been at it for like 10 years and I, I still have feelings of like fear and trepidation about money that come up, like seemingly out of nowhere. Um, so it's a lifelong uh, process, feeling more comfortable, friendlier with money, I think for a lot of us. Um, so it's a fantastic way to look at, um, to look at these principles and to, you know, work them into your own life. Um, so yeah, yeah, SP, SP, for those of you who don't know, yeah, SP just re refers to specific person. Um, it's just, it's a big thing in the, in the manifesting community, especially the Neville community. Um, so I didn't used to talk about it at all in this, you know, I don't know. My friend Maggie, you know, Neville Goddess, she, she talks about it so well um, that I made a video about it. And then once I made one video about it, I realized there was a lot more to say about it. So um, I just think the SP portion of this law of attraction community, um, law of assumption community, whatever you want to call it. I think it's really toxic um, because the majority, large majority of these people teaching this SP type of advice in regards to manifesting a partner or, or a specific person, whether that's a specific person that's an actual specific person or just like a general romantic partner, I think so much of that advice um, is just bad, which doesn't mean that all of it's bad. It doesn't mean there's not good SP teachers. Um, it's just, it's a hugely popular way of applying Neville's advice. And it's a hugely misguided one, in my opinion, most of the time. So, um, you know, again, I have a playlist of some of the SP videos I've done. I do recommend uh, Maggie's stuff in regards to SP um, concepts and how they're misinterpreted. Also, uh, Caleb, I, we, you know, I made a video mentioning him a couple of weeks ago. He's a good SP coach. He talks about it in a sane, good, healthy manner. Um, all right. Let me just read a couple of these uh, questions here again if i missed you on the chat just say it again just write it again guys because i'm like definitely not a chatter in terms of like how i i usually <laughs> i usually just you know usually just bullshit with people in these in these uh same sessions in the best way um okay so here's the question. In the same vein as the money manifesting, I think for me, the things that are quote unquote harder to manifest, I have a subconscious aversion to them. I would really like a partner relationship, but I realized that after a pattern of foul relationships, I have subconscious issues with relation to this subject. Tips for rooting these out. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, One thing, one thing that just comes to mind is like, you know, one way of, of doing it is like, you can think about something like another subject that you might be good at. Like some people are very good at relationships, um, but are bad at money or some, some people are very good at manifesting good health, but are bad, um, you know, at being in relationships. So one, one option is you can think about a part of your life you feel good about and see how that feels, how like natural it feels for that to, you know, be like naturally like healthy and for it just to happen. For instance, like, let's say um, you have a really good relationship with money and like you don't have a lot of money issues and money does flow to you and you enjoy what you do to make money. And, it, you know, you don't perhaps even worry about money all that much, at least compared to the vast majority of the adult population. But let's say even though you have that aspect of your life, um, one could say in, in good order, you know, you have trouble with relationships. Well, you can think about how healthy your 
relationship with money is, right? Or again, this could be any other aspect of your life too. You, you probably have some aspects of your life that are healthy and abundant and manifest naturally without so, so, many, so much inner resistance, right? Think about how that feels and then compare it to how you feel about relationships. That's one way of looking at it. There are so many different ways of looking at, um, you know, the kind of like the hangups that we have, uh, especially when it comes to something like partner relationship issues, that I really think a large part of this is being open to different advice that makes sense to you. Probably advice that's not like a magic pill. I mean, that's what I was touching upon when I said the SP advice we hear on social media is so terrible most of the time because people treat it like it's a magic pill. There is no magic pill for relationships. There is no magic pill for relationships. I can't emphasize that enough. Relationships take work. You're speaking to somebody in me who is very good at relationships, very relational. And um, I can tell you relationships take work and communication. And I think we have to be sober-minded about this and see that as a good thing. Um, a subconscious aversion to relationships is the same thing as an imaginative aversion to relationships, in my opinion. You know, Kuwait always says subconscious is just another word for your imagination. Um, when you think about relationships and what you want in a relationship, what comes up for you? What, like, what, what do you, again, what do you feel? Like, there's got to, there's probably something in the body, some discomfort in the body. And if you pay attention, you're going to notice your thoughts associated with relationships, what you're imagining about relationships. See, subconscious st stuff, like relationship stuff, it's probably been there for a long, long time since you were, you know, maybe a kid or a teenager or no, in all likelihood by your early twenties, it, it was enmeshed in there, if not earlier, you know, romantic relationships. So you're imagining negatively about it. You think about something that's hard in your life that you don't have, like a relationship, a romantic relationship. What comes up? A ton of negative stuff you're thinking about in regards to it, probably. Do you want to look at that stuff more openly? A way to do that is what we did at the beginning of this session. We felt what came up for us. and We didn't judge it as much. And this is why I really recommend, you know, taking a somewhat therapeutic approach to this. Doesn't mean you have to see a therapist or a counselor or, you know, some other kind of alternative healer. You don't have to do that. But in the very least, be willing to look and feel what's coming up for you in regards to relationships. And a therapist, or, you know, especially a therapist who like specializes in relationships or, or specializes in like how you feel about them, like, you know, your different, the different parts of, of who you are and like how those parts relate to each other in regards to relationships, which is like what a good IFS, internal family systems therapist can do with you. Um, if you work with someone, you know, they can help facilitate it for you, or you can do it yourself. But like, regardless, you have to become more intimate 
with this subconscious aversion, with this imaginative aversion. This aversion is telling you something. And if you listen to it, by listen to it, I mean feel it some, feel it. It can stop being such a foe and start to become a friend. I don't know if this is making sense because we're doing this via chat and not, you know, I'm not talking to you or whatever on video, but I think it should make some sense. Again, just finding out a little bit about IFS is very worthwhile. Um, there's several books uh, and a ton of YouTube videos about the Richard Schwartz type of approach, you know, IFS, which is what that is. A book like Emotional Intimacy by Robert Augustus Masters talks a lot about this and about the relationship we have with our with ourselves when we were young and how we deal with our feelings is then reflected in our outer relationships and our romantic relationships. Um, you know, then if you want to get more new agey about it, you know, David Hawkins, I actually just released a new podcast episode, which is also on YouTube about doing shadow work. David Hawkins and letting go talks about working with our shadow. Um, that's this. When we start working with this subconscious aversion, which is your shadow, our relationship with the changes. And I think if you, if you do that earnestly, genuinely, lovingly, patiently, your relationship with yourself in regards to romantic relationships will change. And in all likelihood, your external reality will eventually change as well. But in the very least, you will feel better about where you are at in regards to it. And that takes work. That's not a magic pill. That's doing the work. And, um, whether it's money or relationships or health or your job or anything else important to you, whatever it is, it's pretty worthwhile to do this work. If you've come this far, if you've made it here, it's probably worthwhile to experiment and, and do this kind of work in the way that feels right for you. And you know, this goes for everything that I say here. Don't listen to me, listen to yourself. Take the little that I say that really resonates, play with that. Everything else, just disregard it. Nobody knows anything in regards to you more than you know. You know so much more about yourself than anybody else. All this stuff is just to help point little things out, little subtleties that then you can you know, use to correct your behavior in some way, gently correct. Um, so yeah, I hope that was, was helpful. Um, okay, hold on. So we're going to go to an SP question. I'm just looking at some of this other stuff. Um, no, I say other stuff. It just means some of these other chat questions. Um, blah, 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 blah. so it's so funny. Like every, everybody is different. Like I just said. Um, I know a lot of people like to just do these chat type of sessions. It's just it's a different vibe. Um, so here's a question. Hello, Tim and everyone on this call. I am very appreciative that you're doing this. My SP is my ex-husband who I've been with for 20 years, and I thought I would be with forever. From our divorce, I've learned that I cannot control other people, yet I've gone down the rabbit hole on YouTube of how I could manifest him back hear this kind of stuff all the time. You are the first person on YouTube who speaks some sense into the SP stuff. I am trying to figure out how to not drive myself crazy with fantasy and manifesting if I should really be focusing on more healing and moving on and figuring out how to do that. I've been divorced a little over a year and still want him back despite logic and common sense. I'm looking forward to today's discussion. Great question. Um, and thank you for the kind words. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give my opinion. I mean, this again, listen to what I just said. This is my opinion. My opinion doesn't mean 
sheet doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything if it doesn't resonate with you okay don't feel like don't judge yourself because of what i say um the first thing i would say uh sp issues like this i often it's one of the first questions i ask i i say you know have you spoken to your sp in this case your husband have you spoken to your husband about your desire to be back with him And the answer usually is yes. It's not always yes by any means, but I'd say the majority of time the answer is yes. Um, and the next question is then like, have you had like a, you know, like a, like a deep conversation? Like, have you have you revealed exactly how you feel? Because one thing that I have noticed is that people will speak to their you know, their SP or their romantic partner that they're not getting along with or are not with and want to be with. And they'll have a conversation, but like they're polite about it. And they like don't really express how they're feeling. Um, that's not going to work, in my opinion. Like this is one of the most important things, if not the most important thing in your life that you're working on. You want to have that kind of deep conversation. Doesn't mean you have to write a freaking speech and rehearse it before. Nothing like that. Emotionally, you want to convey to your partner what you want. And this is what's difficult a lot of the time. Is not that. That might be difficult, but this is harder. A lot of the time, you, you do that because it's very important to you. And plenty, plenty of people in the SP community never do anything like that, mind you, okay? But if you are mature and are like, this is what I really want, I have to express how I feel. And you can do it, again, not dramatically, but just express yourself, really express love, the love you feel for the other person, which is why you want to be in a relationship with them. If you don't feel love for the other person and want to be in a relationship with them, you can get off this call because this is you're not going to get good advice here then. But if you love the other person and express the that love, that degree of love and wanting to share your life with that person, if you do that, what's very hard is they will say they hear you and perhaps they don't hear you because they might be overwhelmed. But let's say they do hear you and it might take them a couple of days to hear you. They might say I have to process this. It might take them a couple of weeks to process. They might say, I'll get back to you about this, right? Um, but when they do hear you, there is a good chance that they're, they're going to say, I appreciate you, I love you, and I do not want to be in a relationship with you. I don't want it. I don't want it. And this is the point of our session where I wish this was whiskey. Alas, it's only water. Um, that's what's tough. You want it really bad, and they don't want it. And that's where we get into so much of this SP garbage on YouTube. Well, people say, persist, keep on doing it. And you can do that. But if you love that person and you want what's best for them and you love them and you tell them, you lay it all on the table for them and you let them process it and you know that they've listened and they still say, I don't want this anymore. then you got to be mature and move on, in my opinion. And sometimes when you're mature and move on and say, I love you, okay, they'll have a change of heart. But sometimes that's just it. A lot of the time, it's just it. People change. Relationships change. Relationships are inherently um, moving, flowing. And if you're going to try to put a person in the box and say, this has to be the person, this has to be the relationship, 
That's not loving behavior. I remember when my wife and I were, um, had gone out for like a, a couple of years. We weren't, was before we were, you know, engaged or married or what have you. Um, and we had like a, uh, it was, I don't even know if it was a fight or not. Um, I don't remember the specifics, but like, it can't, like, basically was like, you know, like my wife was like, you know, I love you. I don't need you. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I love you. I don't need you. That's the truth. But if you need that person to be there and they don't want to be there, that's a, you know, that just doesn't make sense, in my opinion. Um, you know, one thing we can do always is just wish the person the best. Wish them again. You can watch, you know, my SP videos on the you know, one of my playlists, you know, I, I think there's a couple of Joseph Murphy video inspired videos where, you know, I'm quoting from the power of your subconscious mind. And Murphy's is talking about like love, loving the other person do, you know, do onto others as you would do to yourself, the golden rule. You got to do that with your partner. That doesn't mean like, there's a lot to this. That doesn't mean you can't try to improve yourself to, to make it so the relationship is mended. Like, for instance, let's say that you're, I'm totally making this up, but, but let's say like your husband was like, well, you know, I need you to be, um, to listen to my needs more and be more like, uh, more open, with, more affectionate with me. You know, and, and like, you know, your husband wanted, like his needs might be, he wants more space or whatever, but he also wants affection, more affection, right? Seemingly two contradictory things, but they're not, they're related in a way, right? You can, you, to help mend the relationship, you can try to give him those two things. You can try to give him more affection, like physical affection, and you can try to give him more space, more time to do his own thing or whatever. Um. And that can help. That's a mature approach or whatever of, of what's going on. But that's not bells and whistles are just affirming, you know, he wants to be with me. He wants to be with me. He wants to be with me. I mean, you can affirm that too, but I'd much rather affirm something like, I don't give specific affirmations. Affirmations are flexible. Just do it however you want. Say what you want. But saying something like, I love him. I want him to be happy. I hope we're together. I love him. I want him to be happy. I hope we're together. Saying something like that instead of like, he needs me or we are, we're in a relationship forever. You know, he loves me so much. You, you affirm, you may say affirmations like that. You sound like a sociopath. You might not be a sociopath, but people in the SP community unintentionally sound like sociopaths a lot of the time. Terrible idea for me not to bring whiskey. In all seriousness, I hope that helped a little bit. Um, and the other thing is like, you know, you still want him back despite logic and common sense. I get that emotionally. I get that. That's again, what's tough. You're like, I know that he, you know, this is not, happening right like it's not doesn't make sense that i still want this but the body still wants it i get that processing that stuff takes time takes time and you might think oh it's a year you know that uh, it can take more than a year i hate to say that it can take more than a year what speeds up that processing, in my opinion, again, is being more emotionally intimate, feeling into like, you know, I still want him back. I still want him back. I know this doesn't make sense or isn't logical, but I still want him back. Feel that, that pain. And if you want, you can ask like, what, you know, where are you coming from pain that wants him back? Where, where is this coming from? It's probably coming from something that's pretty deeply in there. Like from when you were like a kid or something. 
it's tough to lose a loved one, to, to lose a relationship with a loved one, to go through divorce, to have that pain. All I'm saying is we don't have to pretend it's easy. We don't have to pretend it's as simple as just affirming it away. That stuff can work. It can work. But if we don't have maturity about our relationships, um, it's probably not going to work in the long run. Or, I mean, most definitely it's not going to work in the long run. But the more love we give to ourselves and to others, especially our loved ones, the more they feel that. That can make us feel better even if there's not any external changes, even if your husband doesn't want to be with you still. If you feel more love towards him and towards yourself, you'll feel better. Again, easier said than done, but we can do it. I mean, that's what these ideas are talking about, pointing to. Feel free if you have follow-up uh, questions about that. I'm not saying your name just because I'm trying not to say names, but feel free. Thank you for that great question. Um, all right, next question. Before I stumbled upon Neville, I always walked away from situations always walked away from situations involving an SP where I was hurt or betrayed. Now that I have learned about Neville, I struggle with embracing the concept that I am the creator of what happened between me and my SP, me and an SP. Part of me just wishes I hadn't found Neville. I find myself wondering how I am living and what I, am I creating in relationship SP or non SP related. I almost feel like I can't be relaxed in my interactions. Yeah, yep, that's a great observation. Um, a lot of people on this call are not going to like what I'm going to say. It's like since finding Neville in a way, there's like more pressure, right? You see that it happens a fair amount because you're like, I'm directly responsible for everything that happens in my world, right? Everybody's me pushed out in some way. If that doesn't feel good for you anymore, forget Neville. just a man he was just a man he said a bunch of horse shit we all say a bunch of horse shit you can still value his advice the good parts for you and just forget about it you can walk away from the neville community I mean, I can tell you my own life, like the, the main reason I read Neville now is just because I have clients and people who want to talk about it. But I, you know, I got into Neville in 2014. I, I basically walked away from most, I, I hardly ever read Neville for like probably three or four years. Like once I found Emil Kue in 2016 and then like got more into, had like a relook at like what Joseph Murphy was saying and then got into psycho cybernetics, what Maxwell Maltz was talking about, and then found H. Emily Cady, who's just a spiritually much more, um, I would say like healthier version of Neville. Uh, once I found those other teachers, I, I like was not reading Neville at all, hardly at all. And I felt no regrets from that. Neville makes you feel guilty a lot of the time, un, un, inadvertently, mind you. But, um, you know, everybody talks about, oh, you have complete control. You created this. You created that. Da, da, da. How about if he's fucking wrong? He was just a man. And now there's a cult around him on YouTube. Same with this SP stuff. A lot of it lacks common sense. It makes you feel bad. I don't think he would have liked that. I think he was a fantastic teacher, but it's not Neville and everybody else. You know, I mean, these days there's several LOA teachers I appreciate much more than Neville. And that I integrate into my day-to-day -day life much more than Neville stuff. Neville blew my mind when I first found him. Blew my mind. 
And he was one of the first, you know, manifesting teachers I found, which is one reason, but he was be clearly better and more profound than the other teachers I'd found before. But I think a lot of people who are into this stuff, you know, for a while, they, they find other teachers and they might gravitate to other teachers. And it doesn't mean they don't appreciate Neville, but they just don't find that like his outlook is the end all be all because his outlook is not the end all be all unless you want it to be. Um, in this case, you know, regarding what your comment, I, for you, I would really try to find some other teachers who are less dogmatic sounding than Neville. Hey, Tim, uh, yeah. I asked that question. I was going to jump in on that. So I think you're, you're right. Um, I, maybe his teachings have been now just completely twisted by so many yeah. uh, coaches on the YouTube community. And I think I kind of fell victim to that because, like I said, prior to Neville, learning anything about uh, manifesting, you would like the the normal thing is to just walk away from a situation that doesn't make sense. But now you're right. right. I sit here and I judge myself because I look at these communities of people saying, well, all you have to do is just sit here and speak affirmations out there and things just turn. And it's, it's getting to a point where it's uh, like, what is the reality behind all of this? And that's where I question it. So um, that that one piece just kind of now has me kind of walking on eggshells because I, it's not just SP related, it's any communication with anyone. I, I sit there and I think, how right. am I moving forward in communication and creating a scenario where did I think this? Am I, uh, and then I'm just, it's like, what do you take um, as being the truth? And then, like as you go look at all these YouTube channels, um, they just keep they, they make you feel like you're doing something wrong, that you're not affirming right, you're not thinking clean, you you have a bad mental diet, and I I struggle with all of that. I I, I sort of judge myself harshly at this point as I'm trying to work through the actual work of Neville and what's out there. Yeah. Yeah, we've we, we've discussed this before. The two of us have. Um, yeah, it's a really. It happens a lot. Again, that's why I'm speaking about Neville in 2023, just because I see it all all the time. And there's there's a lot of pressure people put on themselves because they feel guilty and they feel like they're doing something wrong. And in, in my opinion, um, there's like this like, <laughs> it's like a a lot of the Neville community is like a Ponzi scheme, you know, not to say that the success stories aren't true because a lot of them are. I believe the success stories I read on Reddit a lot of the time. I believe that stuff, but it's a lot of people talking a big game and then like the results are not consistent or continuous and people like seemingly aren't maturing in their discussion about it enough for me to believe this just all this crap. I don't, I don't know. I just don't believe, like, I believe the individual success stories, but I do not believe the simplistic explanations I'm hearing and the lack of, you could say, spiritual depth that is in the way people are talking about this stuff makes me seem that there's like, this is like something people don't really get. And um, they talk about it like they get it and understand it. I hope I don't come across like I get it and you don't. I, I don't. I, I'm trying to do the exact opposite of that. I'm saying I understand very little of anything. But you know, I did a podcast episode of this like a year, uh, like over a year ago, I think now. Like that's the way to go about things. I think a lot. Like only don't know. You know, there's a Zen teacher I like who always said that. And like Socrates, I think was like, you know. He was like, you know, all I know is that I don't know much. And that makes makes it so that I'm smarter than most people who think they know stuff. Like in regards to this Neville scene, 
you know, your situation, you know, I know you, I, I, I would recommend again, it's again, it takes a while to process, but really just consciously decide I'm not going to watch or watch this shit. You know, you don't have to watch me either. Just turn off YouTube. I won't be offended. You know, you know how to reach me. I mean, just, it's like, I think you're the only sane person talking about this material. No, the, 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 there's a few other people. There's a couple other people. Yeah. Uh, there are a few. But it's the problem is, again, it's a small minority compared to everybody else talking about it on social media. But my point is, so you have the you have the couple of people talking about it, right? You can listen to whoever the hell you want. But if you know, like at the beginning of the of feeling is the secret, Neville says. It's much better to have one value trusted source than go looking for, you know, a hundred different people talking about something that pertains to all this stuff. I mean, the reason that I always go back to these old teachers is because I trust them in what they're saying. And I trust very few people talking about this stuff in, in the modern scene. So drop YouTube for the most part or 80, 20 it. So watch 80% less YouTube. You know, or I, it, I hear it. it's, it's tough. It's right in front of your face all the time. But I mean, you'd be better off listening to music or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, um, like I noticed, like we have, uh, we have, <laughs> we have our Alexa plugged and then unplugged like a lot of the time for this ridiculous reason it's because of our uh, one of our baby monitors and that's a plug issue um anyway i was listening to a lot more like uh, you know modern youtube stuff in regards to the, this these teachings but a lot of it by teachers i really like um, I was listening to a lot of that stuff the last couple of months just because our alexa wasn't plugged in that much and instead of listening to music, I was listening to, you know, people talking about these different manifesting ideas. And I noticed we, we plug, we've had it basically plugged in a lot the last week. I'm listening to more music and I feel more at ease in, in flow during the day a lot of the time. It's because I'm not listening to these ideas. You already know the ideas. You don't, I'm not saying you shouldn't listen to any of it, but you don't need to be thinking about it or listening to it all the time. And I know it's what it's one thing to say, well, don't think about it all the time. And then you still are. But if you just pay less attention to it and then also start say, saying like, you know, instead of thinking about these ideas, when I start thinking about these ideas, I'm going to notice what comes up in my body and how I feel when I think about them. That stuff will start to change. And I mean, again, the first book I wrote about Neville, which is still my, the most contained thoughts I have about Neville's approach. Because I haven't learned much since 2015 in regards to Neville. Relax more, try less. Easier said than done. Still worth doing. Relax more, try less. The current Neville community, in my opinion, uh, I don't think they do that. Thank you. I appreciate that response. <laughs> of course. You're better than these videos, these YouTube, but don't just, you know, really relax more, try less, you know, try your best, do stuff, find stuff that you find relaxing that has nothing to do with LOA. Like if you like to take walks, take a lot, take walks or, you know, swim or whatever the heck you want. It can be binging shows on Netflix. The problem is like we get into this stuff and then this becomes our hobby, right? But it's a shitty hobby a lot of the time. There's more relaxing things we could be doing. Again, it doesn't mean we should totally stop watching videos or whatever, but just like if it's not making you feel good, do something else instead a lot of the time. I hope that helps. Um, feel for, thank you for chiming in. It's nice to talk to you and it's nice to have somebody on audio. Um, I'm going to read this question, this next question here. Uh, after finally ending my off and on again with my SP, I dated a few guys, but finally came to the conclusion that I don't want to date or be in a relationship at all anymore. Is this normal? I've always either had someone or was actively seeking to be with someone. Now I don't care at all. Um, 
yes, it's normal. And the reason I say it's normal, first of all, you, you, I hear, I've heard several instances of that. And I know people who that's been the case for, okay? And the bigger reason is it's normal because it feels, nor it feels right for you right now. That's freaking normal. You're not being a sociopath or acting weird or narcissistic by not wanting to be in a relationship or be with anybody. That's totally fine. Totally fine. And here's a little secret. It would be fine if it was abnormal and weird. Who cares? It's no one else's business. If it feels normal, if it feels right, great. Great. You know, I mean, that's fine. If you don't care at all, if that feels good, it sounds, I mean, that's the kind of thing like when I say, I don't care, like that feels good. If that feels good, perfect, ride that wave and it might shift. You might find a year or two from now, maybe a week from now, who the hell knows, maybe five years from now that all of a sudden you do want to be in a relationship. If you had an SP issue and it was like bothering you just to be out of that and then being at, like just to not have that emotional roller coaster as much. Whew, what a relief, you know? I, it's like I always quote that William Burroughs line, all pleasure is relief. The relief of not having to be in a relationship or even want to be in a relationship. I'm just here right now. I'm just doing my thing. Life's okay. It's great. Great. Nothing wrong at all with that whatsoever. I've always either had someone or was actively seeking to be with someone. Guess what? You get to be with yourself now. You get to seek yourself. And you're already right there. You already have yourself. So good. Hope that helped. If you, if you want to, you know, write in more, feel free to. Um, but yeah, totally normal. Thank you so much for your response. I'm will, I will go on the video and talk if that would help. Uh, yeah, by all means, feel free to come on the video and talk. You, you definitely can. I just, it's all about your identity. I mean, if you're cool talking about it, by all means, I love talking to talk. I would love to talk to you about this. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm not going to say your name just for privacy. Perfect. Stuff. Hey. Yeah. So did that help? It did. It did tons without you even knowing the context or me answering the questions. Um, just to let you know, um, I am a mental health therapist and I Good. Great. am in therapy and I'm doing all this work. And what I'm, I mean, what really ended up with the divorce is addiction issues on my ex-husband's part. I think what happened to me is I couldn't get him to respond the way that I wanted him to. And logically, I understand addiction. I understand relationships take work. And I found all this stuff online, YouTube, and it was like, it just kind of put me back in like, oh, I do have control over this. And yeah. it doesn't matter the circumstances. Yeah. That's what they keep telling you. Yeah. And so I'm going against my what my therapist is telling me. I'm going against what I understand about addiction. And it's like all of a sudden, none of those barriers matter. And I can just have control over the creating the relationship that I want, which seems so weird because I don't understand how this person is going to change where he's actively telling me he's not in a place to be in a serious committed relationship. He also is showing up in a way that he's just not. And I went complete no contact. It's been like eight months now because he pretty much is not there and doesn't, he says he doesn't want to be, but then he I think he still wants, you know, to have that attachment to me, but he doesn't want to do the work, which is why I finally ended things because I know relationships take work and he's not willing to do that work. So I think I did the same thing and I fell into this, oh, there's a way to do this magically, even though I constantly tell clients something, I hear it from my therapist, but it... 
I fell into the trap of like, oh, there's this other way and I can put my energy doing these things and then somehow all the problems will just be resolved and I'll be back together with them. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love that. I love that you shared that. And um, this is the kind of thing that you just shared that is we see so often in this crazy SP community. It's just, it's like, there's a lot to unpack there. Thank you. Thank you. for. Uh, first of all, I will say you are hardly alone in terms of, of uh, th- th- this happening to you and getting pulled into this, you know, weird underground thing where, you know, you can control your own reality and, you know, your husband's addiction and all these issues and, you know, your therapeutic background, they don't matter (laughs) if you can manifest your dream life. Um, But so let me start, let me play devil's advocate a little bit. Okay. Hypothetically, you could manifest your husband back heal his addiction by implementing these principles it is in my opinion which might be a whacked out new age opinion possible it's not the kind of thing especially if he seems seems unwilling to do the work it's not the kind of thing that most people can do whatsoever Excuse my French, but I don't trust any of these motherfuckers on YouTube talking about SP stuff being able to do it. Um, but it is possible. I mean, and if you read people implementing these principles in a very serious, serious way, you could potentially, hypothetically, through love, through releasing, heal your husband and have the relationship come back and flower. Or in the very least, help heal your husband in some way. That said, because most of us live on the ground and you have a therapeutic background. And I've seen, thank you again for sharing this because I see this a shocking amount, people with a solid (laughs) therapist, basically people with a solid mental health background, um, still falling, falling for this stuff and falling for the simplistic aspect of it. I should say it's very common because it sounds good. And Neville's so articulate, you know, a lot of these teachers are so articulate. Oh my God, there's really something to this. I'm seeing all of these testimonials on YouTube. This works, you know, da, 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 da. So it's like a Ponzi scheme. That's what I mean. Like, it's not actually like, so if you were to do this, this healing would be like, I mean, you read, read Neville, you read other, the other great teachers, read people like H. Emily Katie um, or Joseph Murphy, the, like, It would involve, and also like like a course in miracles, something like that. Yeah, even I do like, the course yeah, actually. Yeah, something. I mean, really, I would say like the course or something like the forgiveness and love thing. I feel like that's the that seems very healthy and sane to me. Um, but I mean, you know, again, with feet, both feet on our on the ground, with your therapeutic background, particularly, you know what you're doing. Your husband has to do the work, basically. And is there a way hypothetically to have to manifest him doing the work? Yes, there is, I guess. Yes, yes, there is. But like, um, do you really want to do that? Do you want to put that on yourself? You know, I mean, it's like, it's like, that's a genuine question. Like, is that your responsibility? I I would say no. As your, if I was your therapist, I would say, no, that's not your responsibility. That's his responsibility. Um, I'll mention this here. This might not be relevant to your situation, but I'll mention it here. I mentioned a couple in a video a couple of weeks ago. A really interesting comparison to this SP stuff is like um, the book uh, Autobiography of a Yogi by Yogananda. Um, some of you know it, but not enough people in the Neville community have ever read it. Um, he talks all about miracles, very similar to like the way that Neville and some of these people talk about performing miracles. Um, it just came to mind like, he talks in that book about 
um, his teacher being with, I think, one of his disciples and his disciples really sick. And he, he hadn't seen his teacher for like a year or two. And he, his teacher came back and he's like, my teacher was completely depleted. And it was because he had helped facilitate healing this person and it totally depleted him. And this guy was considered a yoga, a yogic master, you know, by anybody who knew him or whatever. Um, but anyway, it's just interesting. Like we hear all, like the, there's always these mirror, you can create miracles that, and you can't, things can happen. Right. But it, it's not, it's really, um, it's intense work, generally speaking, you know, um, it's not always intense work. I mean, I, I do believe some of the stories I see on Reddit where it's like, I just assumed it and somehow some weird way it clicked and this change for the other person. But generally speaking, um, that forgiveness work that, you know, of course, the miracles work, the kind of stuff I was talking about recently with like um, the golden key of Emmett Fox, which relates to like H. Emily Katie, that kind of, that's like, that's just like spiritual inner work that you can do alongside like their more traditional mental health therapy work on yourself. Um, and you see what happens, but like, you're good enough. You are good enough, you know, with or without your husband and it sucks. I know I feel that, um, I just would be careful who you listen to. I'd listen to the big dogs, the old timers, as opposed to these people on YouTube. Personally, that's what I would do. I really appreciate that. I think that I needed, I needed this because it is something that prior to the addiction becoming a thing, like we just, I felt like we just kept manifesting like amazing things in our life. Like you were talking about earlier, like health, money. I mean, it just seemed like everything was working out, like everything. And I just kind of like almost gotten like emboldened, like, oh my gosh, we figured, we figured the secret to life about, and we just can like, just have this amazing life. And he manifested a job that took him away and everything fell apart and it's just been years and years and when you talk about you know this yogi who just completely just wasted themselves by trying to help somebody else I mean that's what happened to me I just poured everything became you know the fixer and finally had to cut myself away to save myself and I've been doing all of this work on myself and finally got to the point where it's like He's not doing the work either. I can't do this for him. I need to focus on me. And I think there's just so much fear involved in, in that. And then I think also, as you were talking, realizing that everything kind of muddies together for me. Like, I don't know the difference between A Course in Miracles, which um, I've done three years in a row now. So this is my third year and really working on like forgiveness and all of this stuff. But then I don't know the difference between that and some other things. And um, so I just kind of take it all as the same thing. Um, but when you've been talking, one thing I notice is there's a lot of things like that I do and on YouTube and stuff that actually make me feel worse. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that's like an indicator of like, I never feel worse when I do A Course in Miracles, when I like do my lessons and stuff like that. But there's so many things that it's like, especially any at affirming that, like you were saying, like, he loves me and he, you know, I'm, I, he wants to be with me because then I just immediately go to, that's not true. Cause if he wanted to be with me, he would be doing the work to be with me. Like I just completely counter any affirmation yeah. that just sounds a little too not reality based because yep. I know what he needs to do. And I think that it, there's so much of my own work that I need to be doing. I mean, obviously like I, without getting too much in my history, I mean to, you know, this is the first time in my life I've been alone and I really put relationships as like the most important thing in the whole entire world and so I think that I also have wanted to bypass doing my own work which I know is 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 really hard and uncomfortable and just could 
have some magic formula that has worked in other areas of my life. Seems super easy to manifest so many things, but um, I just, I hearing you talk, the sanity of relationships don't necessarily fall into that same category as, or at least for me anyway, as manifesting a job or my body health, all those things have just came really easy to me for some reason, but relationship, it's not. And I, when I, I was commenting my original thing that I wrote, what I said, that learning that I can't control another person, that was like huge for me. It was huge to actually be like, I just have to allow this other person their own journey, their own path. And then all these YouTube videos kind of telling me in a way I'm not controlling him, but that like I can have my own reality with him and we're together, but that's not going to be against his will. I don't know. Like it just got me so confused. And I feel like I went right back to that fixer that I'm fixing and I'm controlling instead of focusing on me. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Makes complete sense. <laughs> makes complete sense. I mean, again, these things, we all, I would say, at least generally speaking, we have things in our life that are come easier to us than other things. And we also have bumps in the road that are when we're doing serious work and trying to improve our lives that are serious bumps usually like stuff happens and um something like what you're going through the process it it you know it's not an overnight thing it's not necessarily a one-year thing and it's like you know what a lot of these spiritual teachings point to is if you come through this sanely if you get if you do the right thing in the sense of you give yourself love, you give yourself forgiveness, and you give your husband love and forgiveness, you will come out stronger and basically on a practical level better than when you went in. I mean, that's what almost all of these, you know, law of attraction type of teachings point to. And I think most of us on this call have seen that bear out in our lives in certain aspects of our lives. Um, I, I, you know, I don't like challenges. I don't like failures. I don't like, you know, dealing with this shit. I don't, I, I don't know many people who do, but when you look at it that way and are willing to face what comes up and feel, especially if you're willing to feel it and forgive yourself and forgive the other. And like, when you're really forgiving yourself or loving yourself in a true, genuine way, I mean, I don't ever talk about the term self-concept on my YouTube channel because everything is self-concept. But if you do that, if you forgive yourself and, and, and you know love yourself and hold no ill will towards anyone else, including your husband, then you're, you're forgiving him too. You're loving him. So, I mean, it's all tied together, but it's not a magical process in my opinion. Um, Sometimes magical, miraculous things seem to happen, but the process leading up to that point, like what's happening to you right now underneath, like what's what you're processing, it's something you can't even explain. And that goes for all, like we can't, I don't believe in like, you know, one, two, three manifest for me. It's like, there's stuff you've been working on for years that, you know, it shows up when it shows up. I think that's what Neville meant a lot of the time, especially late in his later years. He's like, it shows up when it shows up, like, you plant the seed and you, we're constantly planting seeds, you know, and like we're how, how we conduct ourselves is shaping our future, but not in this like weird theoretical way, in this very practical way. So like, can we forgive ourselves and love ourselves and love the other more? Can we learn to relax more into what's happening instead of fighting against it? And know that we will come out on the other side and probably come out better on the other side by doing so. Again, I really recommend H. Emily Cady. To, um, okay. In regard, she's you know, if you like a course in miracles, I really she's just great. 
she was like okay. um you know the U unity church which was like charles fillmore um and myrtle Fil fillmore you know big church back in the day you know they had the bible as their main text and then H. M. Lee katie like and it's like it, it's just beautiful because she talks a lot about failure and how failure is just um an indication of the grace of god to come um and she meant it like she meant it you know um she wasn't a youtuber <laughs> get off youtube <laughs> yeah every, if everybody if anybody just just i hope that's one of the few things that everybody gets out of this we don't have to be on youtube as much i mean really yeah, it, for sure because the sp thing doesn't really exist if you're not on social media looking about this yeah. stuff like if yeah. you're looking at neville or joseph murphy after having come from that crazy community you're going to be like wait a minute I don't see them talking about SPs. <laughs> like, I mean, they, not that they never mentioned stories about partners and stuff, but like, it's just like how this got translated and transmitted in this weird way. It's just very weird. Um, and again, it's not that there's nothing to it. I want to touch, I'm going to keep on answering questions in a second, but thank you uh, so much for your my time. pleasure. My pleasure. I appreciate if you have it. Thank you. Follow up questions. Feel free to email me too. Okay, info. Thank you. And, yep. Of course. Thanks for coming on, hopping on live. Um, the affirmation thing, like, I mean, let's just name, name names here. I mean, I'm thinking specifically Sammy, Sammy Ingram, who I, I like a lot of what Sammy says in terms of affirmations. I think she's brilliant in regards to repeating something over and over again. But what people don't understand, in my opinion, um, first of all, Sammy says a bunch of crazy shit. And I, even though I, I love some of her overriding philosophy about saying something repetitive, repetitively to have it ingrained imaginatively you know, in your mind and your subconscious, um, she says a bunch of terrible, toxic stuff as far as I'm concerned. But why what Sammy talks about works for some people so well is that you have to be repeating some, if you like rationally are like this is bullshit what i'm saying you have to repeat it a ton a ton this isn't like a 10 minute a day exercise you have to wear yourself down mentally where you're so exhausted that your mind starts believing it or you you instead affirm something more general that doesn't seem so crazy and that your mind can buy like Every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. Or I love myself and everybody more and more each day. Or, you know, my life is improving in small and significant ways every day. Or something general like that, that your mind buys. If you have an affirmation or a couple of affirmations, see what resonates with you and that you actually believe. Because when you're saying an affirmation over and over again, you're not going to feel anything or believe it a lot of the time. But you're going to start to believe it enough if it generally resonates with you. But I mean, what Sammy talks about works when you manifest, I mean, when you affirm like crazy hours and hours and hours a day, it's hard. It's hard. It's not, it's, it's, it's like in many ways, a last ditch approach for like when you're desperate and nothing else is working. You can just manifest, I mean, you can just affirm like crazy, you know, and it will shift something. For sure. I mean, that's the value of that. But a lot of the other stuff is um, that she says is nonsense. I just mentioned Sammy because she's better than most of the other affirmation teachers, if not better than all of them. She's the best of all of them. The others, I have nothing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, you know, most of them. But I mean, from what I've seen, it's like they have nothing to offer you. Sammy covers most of it in terms of the affirmation thing. It's the same advice every time to say something over and over again. That's it ties into what Kuei says about what you think. If you keep on saying it, it becomes what you're thinking. That's it. It's a, it's a very, uh, it's a last ditch thing a lot of the time, or it's something you just do for fun. You know, when you have time, you're washing dishes or taking a walk, you just affirm for 10, 20, 30 minutes a day just for the hell of it. But if you have a real charge against it happening, it's not, it's not going to work quickly. If we have like not much of a charge against it and we keep on affirming it we say oh i do believe this is going to happen anyway i've made a bunch of videos on that um i'm just taking a look here i'm 
so bad at this chat thing. I, I'm getting to it, guys. In terms of if people have questions, I'm going to answer them unless we go like way over. But we can go past six o'clock if need be. Um, all right. Okay, here's a question. Um, almost a year ago, or I just want to make sure I didn't miss something. Okay. Almost a year ago, I've set the intention to clear everything that stands between me and a love relationship. I don't have an SP and never have been in a relationship. I've done a lot of shadow work since then. Now I feel great most of the time and don't feel lonely anymore, but I wonder if I'm missing something since nothing has changed in the 3D yet. Great question. Fantastic question. In an example of stuff that we again see happening. I mean, this is this is this is you're not alone with this happening. I'm gonna read this again. This is really good. Almost a year ago, I set the intention to clear everything that stands between me and a love relationship. I don't have an SP and never have been in a relationship. I've done a lot of shadow work since then. Now I feel great most of the time and don't feel lonely anymore. But I wonder if I'm missing something since nothing has changed in the quote unquote 3D yet. Um I think you know what I'm going to say, first of all. There's a lot to this, and feel free to write a follow-up question to what I'm going to say. I wonder if I'm missing something. You're not. The SP you want is you. Um, if, if you feel great most of the time, I have a feeling, and if you still have that intention, which I have a feeling you still do have that intention that you would like a romantic partner, but if you feel great most of the time and don't feel that charge about having a romantic partner, um, I think a romantic partner is going to show up for you sooner than later. It's the charge of that emotional charge, that feeling ugh, of I don't have I don't have a partner. What's wrong with me? I you know I can't get a partner. That slows down the manifestation. Now you might say, well, it's been a year. I've been doing the shadow work for. First of all. Great job doing shadow work, doing this kind of inner work, emotional intimacy work for that long. I mean, that's it. You've done the tough part without question, as you know already, because you feel good uh, most of the time, feel great most of the time. That's great. That's fantastic. Um, that's, fan that's it. I mean, you've done, as far as I'm concerned, you've done the work, but I get it. You would still perhaps, it sounds like, like an SP, not, excuse me, not an SP. You would still like a love relationship. I get that. If you feel good most of the time, you don't feel a charge about the relationship, which is not about being in a relationship, which is not to say that a charge will not occasionally think up, you know, come up. Like you might be feeling good most of the time, but still you get that feeling, oh, I'd really like to be in a love relationship. And like, you might have something comes up. Just keep on doing shadow work then. But understand if something comes up about that, or even if something comes up and stays there for a few hours or a few days even, it's okay. Just process it. No problem. But it's perfectly okay that nothing's changed in a 3D yet. If you still want this love relationship, this now, because you've done the inner work, this is when you can really use these silly LOA techniques they talk about on YouTube. This is when you can um, do affirmations or a, a simple visualization exercise or something like It Works, that RHA, RHJ book where he talks about writing things down. Let me give you an example. So there's not that much of a charge. You usually, you feel good about yourself. You feel great most of the time. I mean, that's so, that's it, okay? That's what's most important. That's what I like sharing with people is how we can feel better more of the time, okay? I'm not an SP coach, right? I'm like, you know, I'm a mental health counselor. You know, I want you to feel good more. That's, so you've done the work. But an example of like something very simple you can do is you could have an affirmation that you say in the morning, perhaps you put like your hand over your chest, you're over your heart. Like I'm now in a, or I'm, it can be, it can be, I'm soon to be, I'm going to be soon in a loving relationship, or it could be, I am in a loving relationship. We can do the Neville thing where it's already happened. It's over. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's whatever feels good to you, whatever resonates with you. Hand over heart. I'm soon going to be in a loving relationship romantic relationship. 
You can say it a couple of times if you want, or you can just say it once. And you just feel that. And see what comes up. Feel into it. Feels good, hopefully. There's no because there's no charge there anymore because you've done the shadow work. Feels good. You feel that, that joy, that happiness of that. And maybe sometimes when you do it, it doesn't feel good. There is a charge. It's like, uh oh, no problem. You feel into it. So you know, you've done the shadow, you've already done the shadow work. So it's like, well, you know, chart, like, why are you here? Do I still have doubts about whether I really want to be in this relationship or I haven't been in a relationship before, so I don't know what to do. Feel into that, no problem. And then just be like, you know, I'm going to still be in a relationship. But just give it time. And what you, you can affirm like that, hand over heart if you want, like say three times a day or every couple hours during the day. Give yourself a minute or two and just do it. Or you can do like what RHJ says, and it works, the, the pamphlet, it works. Just write down a couple of things that you want and look at that sheet and try to resonate with what you read, on, what's on the sheet. Look at that a couple of times a day. And think about it positively if you think about it at all. But you don't have to think about it all the time. Ari Shea in that book says, think about it as much as you can. You don't have to do that. You can just, if there's no real charge telling you it's not going to happen and you feel good most of the time, you could just say, I'm going to be in a relationship soon. And tap into that feeling a couple of times a day. Your subconscious, your imagination knows that. You're guiding it. You might already be doing this. You might, I mean, you might not even have to do anything. You don't, you really, in my opinion, you probably don't have to do anything. If you feel good most of the time, and if you feel like you're getting better and better or more and more loving or, you know, whatever term you want to use, it's going to happen if you want it. Probably going to happen. But just keep on doing what you're doing and the external will change. It should change. If you want to write a follow-up question to that, feel free to, but I hope that helped. But I mean, again, if you're doing the shadow work, it's the big thing, feeling better more of the time, more comfortable being who you are. It's fantastic. Follow-up question for that person or comment was just, I've done the seven-day method diet twice already really helped me get a more positive mindset yes totally totally um good so that's helpful excellent follow-up questions too about it just email me at info at radicalcounselor.com if, if what i said wasn't clear about the affirmations or what have you the devil stuff is great there too i mean if you like to visualize or do something like get in that state you know of like I'm there. Like a really good one for relationships, I think, is like if you want to do a Neville type of exercise, it's like go to sleep imagining the person's next to you. I like that. It doesn't matter if you're in a twin bed or whatever. Just, just, just imagine, just put, make elsewhere here, as Neville says, right? That's why Neville's great. I mean, Neville's so good. Again, I hate this. The fact that I'm the dude bashing Neville, it's crazy. I just want him taken seriously. You know, I don't want these unserious people talking about him. But I don't think most of these unserious people realize they're being unserious. Um, but yeah, that going to sleep with them next to you. There's also the wedding ring or oh, so many variations. Um, <sighs> I want to mention again that I, I did spend a little bit of time making some playlists over the last couple of months. So there's like the SP videos. There's also that Neville mini course where we just start talking about different techniques of Neville's a couple of Joseph Murphy courses, basically. Um, there was something I wanted to say, but it will probably come back to me or it won't. If I missed any questions, feel free to write them in again, too. Something about SP. SP. That will maybe come to me.
people have other questions otherwise we can just sit here it's fine all good i usually do hour and a half group sessions this is two hours maybe an hour and a half is all we need kate are you raising your hand you are i think yes <laughs> um, <laughs> how, are, how are you yeah i'm good yeah so thanks good. so much for doing this this has been a very enriching discussion and yeah just not so much a question i just had something i wanted to share absolutely um, so yeah, I mean, I can I can very much relate to, or kind of, I guess empathize with a lot of the kind of intense emotions and obsessiveness um, that you see in the SP community, because that used to very much be me as well, and um, not not just when it came to relationships, but basically like any sort of goal, I just had a tendency to become very like obsessive about it. Like, oh, if I, if this goal doesn't come to fruition, like my life will be over. <laughs> and yeah, just very, very like intense. And yeah, and then I, I, about a year ago, I just got to a really low point and I realized that this kind of, this habit of mine wasn't really doing me any favors. It, it definitely wasn't making me feel any better. And, um, and so with the person in question, I decided just to kind of, you know, step away from the whole situation, like not to think about it, not to try to do anything to fix it. And, you know, just to kind of focus on other things. And, um, and then, yeah, and then gradually kind of the, this person did kind of start, you know, reaching out. And I kind of got to a point where I was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe I would like this to go somewhere. And so that's when I started kind of learning about some of these techniques and processes and but when I would do them I would find that there was still kind of a lot of I guess like anger and like resentment there and um and I yeah I felt like the just kind of these thoughts of kind of wanting to be kind of I guess like self-righteousness and and wanting an apology that, that, that those thoughts were kind of louder I guess or more dominant than any kind of thoughts of oh I'm in a loving relationship or it was very yeah non-loving thoughts <laughs> I guess how I would put it and um yeah then I remember that I kind of had this this exercise that I um I had done, you know, with other relationships um, where it's called like the 180 shift, where basically you just kind of take a statement and then you write like the opposite of that. So, or you find evidence for the opposite. And um, so in my case, I kind of took this, this belief that I had that this person um, was not capable of commitment. And then I actually kind of found like evidence, like actual, you know, real life evidence that kind of contradicted that statement. And in this in this situation, like he, you know, this is actually like a genuinely good person, you know, that we're talking about. It's not like an abusive jerk right, <laughs> or something. Right. And um, and yeah, I, I and then after after I did that, I was like, okay, it's and very much that kind of feeling of it's done kind of came over me. And I was like, okay, I don't have to think about this anymore. I'm just gonna go on with my life. And it was very much this feeling of calmness. And um and then I am, I am, you know, in a relationship with that person now, but to me, kind of, I guess, if you would call it like a victory or a breakthrough was not so much about the relationship, but just kind of getting to that place of calmness and kind of getting to that place of recognizing that, you know, that it's all good, you know, whether, no matter how like the situation turns out, it's not like your life is going to be over. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Fantastic. Would you say, um, I mean, you, you like you do a lot of A Course in Miracles type stuff, right? I mean, yeah. Do you, did you find that type of practice helpful in this in this situation, or did it Absolutely, not? Absolutely, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. For those of you who don't know, Kate has a, a one of the few good YouTube channels where she talks <laughs> sanely about this stuff. Thank you. G Generate magic, right? Is that the name? Yes. Of the, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so you can look for Kate on Generate Magic. She's got a lot of good advice in regards to all this stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a pr it's a process, right, Kate? I mean, that's what it comes down to. I think for it, sure. it's always one, one, you know, one issue with SP stuff, an obvious issue that we all know when we use common sense is that um, there's this this crazy time thing, 
where it's like, you know, you can do this, right? They're going to come back to you in three days. You're going to get a text in 10 minutes. I mean, all right, you get a text in 10 minutes, then what effing happens? Or they come back to you in three days, then what happens? You got to deal with that. And it takes time. It takes time. Processing stuff takes time. Doing this inner work that we're talking about. It, 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 it takes time. <laughs> I just wanted to add too that my experience was not at all like they show in the videos for, oh, just do this technique and it'll happen in three days or whatever. Like the whole thing took place like over a year. And exactly. Yeah, and it was just me, you know, starting with me kind of deciding, okay, I'm going to step away from the situation. And, and yeah, it was, it was like a long process. Yeah. And I was grateful for the process because there was a lot that I learned, like, and yeah, just a lot that I experienced, like, during that time. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That's, you know, that's why you talk to people about this is because you're, I mean, your interest in the, the process should not be when the process sucks, you got to remember, generally speaking, it's better than the alternative. Okay. Like that, that's what people don't get is that one reason, like we do this stuff is that we want to heal. We want to feel better. And if we don't do the inner work, chances are our outer reality is going to stay similarly painful to the way it has been for a longer period maybe a far longer period than if we do the inner work. Like, you know, switching back to the money discussion in my upcoming book, I talk a lot about like, this work is not like money work, like, like relationship work is not easy a lot of the time. Like, it's like, you have to do work on it. It's a loaded subject for a lot of us as are romantic relationships for a lot of us. Um, but not doing it, um, is a worse option usually. And just because you're gonna feel like crap or like, if you don't feel like crap, you're probably gonna push it down, try to hide it, you know, deep in your unconscious and it's still gonna be there and rear its head. Um, and, you know, one way to look, you know, this is maybe more in regards to money, but it does apply to romantic relationships as well, is if you can get like your resistance, but if I'm just putting a percentage on it just for metaphorical state of sake, but like, if you can get your resistance towards like a romantic relationship where like you feel bad about when you think about being in a romantic relationship, if, it, if you feel bad about being in a romantic relationship 80 or 90% of the time, which a lot of people with SP issues do without question, imaginatively, unconsciously, they feel bad about being in a relationship the vast majority of the time. If you can just get that down from 80 to 90% down to like 50% where it's like half and half, like you still feel crappy a lot of the time about romantic relationships, but you feel okay about it, even maybe a little bit optimistic some of the time, you're going to feel better. And if, if you feel better, honestly, even if you're just at 50-50, you can still externally manifest changes in your relationship status, but also it will just make you feel better in general. And it can lead gradually, maybe over the course of a couple of years to that percentage getting lower and lower. And, you know, Maggie made a great video the other day. She was talking about the 80-20 thing. And like, once you hit like, again, just metaphorical as how I'm using it here, but like once like 80% of your thoughts are positive about something, like you feel good about it most of the time. Like if you think about a relationship or think about money or think about your health and it's predominantly 75, 80% of the time positive, that's gonna on, in the long run over a couple of years outweigh the negative stuff. And you're gonna manifest externally in that regard in a, in a positive way. Um, and, you know, Joseph Murphy has that famous quote in the power of your subconscious mind where he says, like, you know, a, a problem 51 percent solved is, is solved, is, is going to be solved. It's getting there, getting more neutral. Um, you know, in the money book, I say, like, even because a lot of people literally money think about money negatively 95 percent of the time. Those kind of people, if you can get it down to 70 percent negativity, so you're still predominantly thinking negatively about the subject, you're still probably going to feel a lot better than when you were at 95 percent. These loaded subjects really drain us, deplete us energetically, emotionally. Um, so having this aspect of forgiveness and neutrality, 
doing stuff like A Course in Miracles and um, just this deep, you know, this deep work, the golden key, stuff like that, mental diet, stuff like that neutralizes the negativity, gets it lower. So it, it becomes easier for you to feel better and easier for you to actually have these external manifestations gradually or suddenly happen after six months, a year, two years. And anyone who says like, oh, you know, I don't want to spend two or three years on this. I don't think you're being honest with yourself. If you could be in a, like a fantastic relationship in three years, but you wouldn't be in a fantastic relationship for until your third year, would you do it? Um, that's a genuine question, you know? And I just think about the people who go to college and in grad school and PhD and they spend years doing stuff and they aren't guaranteed anything, you know, like, and I guess you're not guaranteed anything with this, but I almost guarantee you, you will feel better if you do the shadow work, the inner work, like that person did today. They're saying how they did the shadow work about love and relationships and working on themselves. And they feel so much better. They feel great most of the time. If that took you a year or two years or three years, as opposed to the alternative, would you do it? You know, I think most of the people on this call would do it, but I, and I don't want you to look at it that negatively. I'm just saying that it's not a, a bad way to look at it just to get rational and to use common sense in that regard. Um, yes. Anything else you want to add to that, Kate? Thank you again for being on and for all you, for all you do. Check out Kate's channel, Generate, Generate Magic. Um, thank you for everything. Love it all. Hopapono is beautiful too. I never say that right. Hop, some, you guys know Hopapono, like, you know, the Hawaiian Hugh Len is beautiful too. Um, Zero Limits, if you guys haven't read that book, there's probably other books at this point, but the Joe Vitale book, Zero Limits is really good talking about that. Sometimes one thing works for me and another time it doesn't, it just depends. I like the idea too of take what you like and leave the rest. My biggest issue for lack of a better word is relaxing and enjoying the process. That's why I love your creations, Tim, and find them so helpful. Abundant blessings, guys. Thank you so much. I know this person, thank you. Just keep doing what you're doing. Um, this is a person who does serious inner work. Um, yeah, I mean, the idea that sometimes one thing works and other times it doesn't is very valuable to keep in mind in regards to this SP stuff, because we have teachers like Sammy who basically are like, just affirm. And again, Sammy's the best. Like most of the other teachers are like worse than that, but it's like, it's like, just persist, just persist. Just do it. It doesn't take into account your whole emotional being, how you feel, all the stuff that's going on underneath. The fact that there's probably stuff like working inside of you that might not manifest for another year or two that you aren't even aware of consciously right now. So like this idea of just like affirming or persisting to the end of like, you know, get the, get the guy, get the girl at all costs. Um, it doesn't acknowledge the fact that sometimes things work and then later on they don't work and things shift and things change. Um, to give an example of my own life about these techniques, like I, um, I was doing like a lot of man, I keep saying man, a lot of affirming um, over the winter, like spending, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes a day affirming. I was into it. I was in a pretty, I wasn't like in a charged place. I was in a very like neutral place, just like affirming. Um, and I found over like the last, actually just last couple of weeks, um, totally going away from that. And like now, like when I affirm, it's much more like I say something once, I feel into it because what I'm saying, when I'm affirming, I can feel I can, it resonates with me. It's not just like a, it's not like, you know, I want him back. I want her back in my life. It's, it's, you know, it feels real to me when I'm affirming. Right. And like, again, I think for most of us, something like every day and every way I'm getting better and better. I feel like you can get behind a statement like that, or there's some general statements you can get behind, but you know, the few statements I affirm, I, I just feel into them. And I do that in the morning. And I do it again during the day, maybe once or twice. And then I do it in the evening and I do other stuff, just like relaxing, vibing out stuff. Cause I like to do that. But, um, I've been liking that recently and I've done that before, but for a while I was doing, you know, repetitive affirmations, which were just kind of like this neutral vibe thing. And that I was liking that for a while. And then I shifted to this and I'll shift to something else perhaps in two months, whatever. Um, Yeah. 
so we got about 15 minutes left. Do we have other comments, questions? I don't remember what I was going to say. There was some other SP thing, like I said. It wasn't that profound. It was just like um, uncommon common sense in regards to the SP stuff. Oh, a book I like that I've recommended to several SP clients is the Byron Katie book, I Need Your Love. Is that true? Uh, you know, a lot of you know Byron Katie is one of my favorite teachers. And I Need Your Love. Is that true? Um, the title kind of tells you what the book's about. And for those of you who don't know, the answer is always, it's not true. The love you need is your own, is your own love not another person, in my opinion. Is that, you know, ask if that's true. I might be, you know, what that might not resonate with you either. Um, bah, 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 bah. Again, yeah, ha, again, I can't say, but Hopin, Hop, Hobopono, you know, Hugh Len, the whole Hawaiian thing, that's very, it's very similar to like, this forgiveness work, it is forgiveness work. Cause it's like, you know, you're saying like, I love you, you know, like, please forgive me. I love you. That those are the kind of statements you say it over and over again. You're saying it to yourself. It's powerful to do. So glad that was brought up. Um, question about ACIM. So ACIM, yes. How, a Course in Miracles. How far do I need to get into it before it stops being nihilistic? Nothing matters. Nothing is real. Um, the, Kate, Kate or someone else who is really into A Course in Miracles can answer that. I mean, that, so I can personally say like, and then Kate or if anyone else wants to talk about it too, like, so I'm not a Course in Miracles person. Like I know it. I've never gone through the whole course. Um, I'm somewhat familiar, I'm pretty familiar with the text, but I, I've never done it, you know, day after day. Um, and that's just because I like other similar stuff. Um, if your interpretation is that it's nihilistic, it might just not be the right thing for you. Um, but Kate, do you have anything, thoughts on that? If, if they feel like it's yeah, nihilistic? I, um, on on this, the surface, it kind of does seem like that because I, I felt the same way when I would kind of read some of those um, like mantras in the workbook. But then when I started to kind of go through it more, I realized kind of the deeper meaning or I guess the driving purpose of the book is to basically kind of get you to see through the illusions um, that, the, that the world has created, basically. And so nothing matters is basically referring to all the things that we think matter um and um which has to do you know with fear and just kind of stressing out about things that are really kind of like inconsequential in the grand scheme of things and so it's about kind of getting to the core of what truly matters you know which is like love and unity and um but yeah it's the basically kind of it's the way i it's hard to explain, you know, until you kind of get deeper into it. But yeah, it's basically kind of to get you to see the world from a different perspective. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I mean, so many of these texts are experiential. It's like um, thinking again, it's one thing that's tough about this stuff is like thinking about it um, is different than like doing the exercise or like, you know, really getting into like a text of like A Course in Miracles, like you start to feel it, you know, but it's, again, it just might not be the right fit for this person, you know, if it, if it doesn't, if it, if it's giving you those vibes, I personally love the, I usually start with nihilism and go from there. <laughs> There's a very, nihilism is a, <coughs> I feel like nihilism Oh, another way, that's a very negative term, obviously, and we're talking about SP stuff. I'm not saying to be a nihilist in regards to relationships or any of this stuff in terms of human relations, but it's a similar word in new thought that we would use would be like um, neutrality, you know, and get into that neutral place where you're, you're open. And, you know, again, when, when you're open and embracing what's happening, the nowness, um, it's a good place to be. Any other uh, questions or anything?
this has been uh, really good. I'm glad that we we did this. Um, perhaps we'll do something like this again. Um, I will say if you have questions for me, as I mentioned, you can email me always at info at radicalcounselor.com or you can just you can email me at my personal email to radicalcounselor at gmail.com. Um, if you have questions for Cecilia, email me and next time I have her on, which will be soon-ish, um, you know, she'll answer them. Um, at least, yeah, she'll probably answer all of them. She'll at least answer a few of them, I'm sure. Um, yeah. This message. I was going to... Uh, good comment there, yeah. Kate just did a follow-up comment here about taking a step back and seeing the bigger picture from the close view everything seems like a problem or crisis from the long view very little does um that's a great point point. and again that's ties right into like if this took a year or two for you to see external results but while you were doing it you started to feel more comfortable being yourself and started to feel better about being yourself but you didn't see any external results for two or three years when you still do this you know that's a but I question. just have one more follow up on that. And thank you so much, Kate, for saying that, because I think that I come from a place where most days I feel mostly good. Like I get triggered with very, very, very few things. So maybe this is just starting out from a place with a person that gets triggered for a lot more things. For sure. That makes sense. Definitely. I went, I went to a really bad place a couple of years ago, and I think I went through ego death. And since then, nothing has mattered. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's where you want to be. You know, I mean, feel free to email me a follow up about that. But um, if, you, if, yeah, I mean, sometimes the external manifestations take time, or if it's for a very loaded thing in your life, like a relationship, but other things are good. Appreciate the other things as it seems like you do. And then more good, surprising good can come out of that. You know, you can tackle the relationship thing or whatever um, in a more patient and loving way. I don't know if that helps that, um, that point, but um, question uh, or comment was, I was interested in hearing you and Cecilia discuss techniques for letting go whatever we may be manifesting. Yeah, I mean, that's, Cecilia and I originally, our next um, discussion was gonna be about letting, was gonna be about different techniques and ways to shift. Um, Cecilia is really good at shifting by using revision. I mean, she's good at using other things too, too but you know, if you've listened to our talks, like she's like, oh no, this actually didn't happen like that, like shifting like that. And that's not my, I, I don't use that approach. So um, that's one reason I wanted to have her on talking about that kind of thing for sp stuff but obviously in general as well and she she'll share other letting go um processes as well i just put out a new podcast episode like i mentioned um where we're talking about the hawkins approach i still letting go is like one of the toughest terms now though because it is so overused um and it means different things to different people um and when Hawkins uses it, it's very interesting because really it's like he's actually saying you let go resisting. So it's it's not letting go really. That it, it, I mean, I don't know. I just don't know if that term is really the best way to, to describe what he's actually saying to do because what he's saying is let go resisting the feeling. Feel into the feeling. So that's an, even even just that is interesting, um, and it's amazing. I looked today because I did you know I released the episode about letting go. Letting go is an incredibly popular book, like incredibly popular. I think it's like in the top one thousand right now of Kindle books or something like that, or paperback books on Amazon, which means it's like 
it's it's amazing because I mean, it's a pretty far out book and Hawkins is a pretty far out guy. Um, but the process he describes, and again, there's different ways of doing it, but the letting go process, the way that David Hawkins describes it, specifically in chapter two of the book, Letting Go, is in a way shockingly straightforward. He just says, feel into the feeling. Don't label the feeling. I mean, you can be like, all right, this, this feels like fear, I guess, right? But then stop thinking about it. Don't label it. Don't, don't, think, don't think about what's going on. Just feel into it. And if you feel into it fully, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start to shift. And he says it usually shifts much faster than you think. Like within 20 minutes, it will start to shift. So the thing that's terrifying us a lot of the time is not the external event. It's not not having the romantic partner. It's this feeling, this feeling of dread or what have you. So if we feel into the feeling of dread, our relationship with it changes. And all of a sudden, the feeling of dread starts to shift more in our life. And we don't have it as often or we're okay when it's there. And because we do that, all of a sudden we are we we don't feel so dreadful about not being in a relationship. So I don't know what letting go means anymore because it's used by so many people in so many different ways, but chapter two of the book Letting Go, where Hawkins says, let go of resisting the feeling and feel into it, is a darn good summation of what um what it means to me, at least. Um, and I'm really glad that book is so popular shocking to me i hope people at least make it to chapter two all right detaching from outcomes and allowing yep uh do you want to expand upon that at all i mean detaching from outcomes and allowing is like so much of this stuff this work in general like we're talking about like the course of miracles work we're talking about like the golden key we're talking about letting go. We're talking about emotional int intimacy, feeling into the feelings. It's the opposite of um, a lot of these Neville techniques where it's like you're specifically trying to get an outcome, right? And so it's like, how do we fuse, how do we coalesce that idea of getting a specific outcome and letting go of there being any outcome, specific outcome? It, it, we have to figure out how these things work in our life i mean exactly yeah that's exactly what i was trying to to ask like how do you uh, when you're so focused on uh, goal achievement and you're supposed to step back and allow it to happen like where's the how do you find the balance and that's what i was um i don't specifically have an sp when i get into this stuff i didn't even know what an sp meant mm -hmm. <laughs> i was kinda, i had to look it up um but um, yeah, it, it's sort of, I, I can set a goal or an intention that I want to manifest something and then I can get very focused on it and then I can just be very aware of it's not here. How long does this take? When is this going to happen? And I'm trying to find that balance of sort of um, allowing it to happen. Like how, do you, how do you kind of hold it with an open palm or something? You know? Yes, I love that. Hold it with an open palm. That's a, that can be the work a lot of the time. I did a video. I don't know if you've seen it. It's in the seminars of the playlist. It's one of the seminar videos. It's one, it's called, I think it's called the best LOA technique. Okay. And it's, it's about, it's a car video and it's about exactly this. Um, I'll search that. Otherwise email me and I'll send you a link to it, but it's like, it, it, in my opinion, a lot of the work is fine. I, again, like open, like finding that happy balance. And it might be, I mean, people manifest things by just doing these Neville Murphy type of specific, I'm focused on it. And then there's other people who manifest the same thing, basically, by letting go, like the Hawkins way, just feel into the, like just doing shadow work and feeling into these uncomfortable feelings and becoming comfortable with them. What's the connection? You know, and how, how can I apply that connection, that seeming contradictory connection directly into my life? Mm -hmm. uh, um, 
that's going to be an individual process for each one of us. I think personally, I talk a little bit in the video, I'm going to articulate, I articulate it better than I am now. I think a big part of it is when you do like a Murphy or Neville exercise and are focusing on something and then feel it, if you really feel it, it's done. There's that, re there's that release. It's like, it's over. Oh. It's like, I have it I already. Had, it's within me. It's already here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you do like a letting go thing, really embrace the feeling, don't resist it, really feel into the feeling. When you get deep into that, it's a release. It's a re it's like, ah, oh, the feeling's not real. Like it's not, that's not who I actually am. It's over. There's a, with both, there's a, 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 a visceral sense of relief that is, in my opinion, connected directly with the creative manifesting process. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. I hope that was helpful. Feel free to write me an email. It doesn't have to be today too. It can be a follow-up about this, you know, cause you can experiment with letting go and, and like, and just see how, how that ties in with this other stuff. But yeah, it's like, uh, you know, I had a client the other day who I've worked with, you know, on and off for a long time. And, and she was saying like, you know, like I like the absolute method, just like, like relying on God, you know, or like, just like thinking of God, like the golden key, like if, in, you know, if I rely on that, if I believe in that, you know, why am I doing these affirmations still asking for a specific thing? You know, why, why do I have a list of things I want or I'm doing the, it works thing where I have a, and that's the same thing. Why are you doing it? Well, it's not like you're doing anything wrong, in my opinion, because there's this, this deep spiritual part where it says, God is good, everything's fine, I'm releasing judgment, expectation, it's all fine. And what I want then will perhaps come in, but I'm okay right now anyway, there's that. And then there's just a very practical psychological side where it's like, I want this thing, I'm going to get it, which is more like what Kuwait talks about. And like, like, with Neville and Murphy, it's like the expectation, the assumption, I'm going to get it. Can you use both of those things at once, those two approaches at once? I think you can, but it's experiential. You may be, you know, it's like, it's whatever works. And it might be like, you find yourself doing just letting go and not trying to get a specific thing sometimes. And it might be, you just are trying for a specific thing and aren't letting go at all other times. Um, just be flexible. Yeah. Thank you. That's what makes it fun in a way. You know, I mean, it's like if we do a technique diligent, like with all of our heart, we're not playing around and we don't have to do the same technique over and over again. It's just as long as we do it seriously, when we do it, we just do it for as long as we want to do it. And if we want to switch, we can switch. I find for me personally, I think I do better with, um, going general even though i may have in my mind a very specific vision of what i want but if i just go more general towards um i always get what i want you know just if worries come up around yep. the specific thing if i just kind of go towards i always get what i want you know it, it always comes to me anyway uh, and that's why i say like i don't maybe i have several sps i don't i don't have one specific person but maybe like i'm open to there are a few that I can think of that I'll be open to, but I'm don't, not. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about that. that. Don't worry about yeah. that. Don't worry about that Great. at all. Yeah. That's like, just be normal about relationships. Like it's like, Oh, I'd like yeah. to be in a relationship. That's enough. Yeah. Your mind knows yeah. if you, if you enjoy going general, keep it general. Mm. And if you feel like, because your mind already knows, like if you've, if you're already, even though you're not writing down or affirming a specific thing or visualizing a specific thing, your mind already knows. Did you, I don't know. I'm a big fan of like, of what you just said, of just doing it that way and just having this approach like, oh, I always get what I want. Mm. That's just, that seems much more healthy than being like, I'm, I'm zoning in on this specific person. <laughs> you know, it's whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, you're saying the future tense is powerful for me. It ties into faith the size of a mustard seed. The mustard seed knows it will grow into a mustard seed. Right. You know you're going to get it. If Again, Maggie Neville Goddess always talks about this. It's like her, her thing is like, I can do it. It's going to happen. 
you don't have to know anything more about manifesting than that in, in many ways in regards to like mentality to have your life significantly change. You don't have to read any of these esoteric books. If you think I'm going to get, this is going to happen. I can do this. I'm getting better and better. You're, maybe you don't get the specific thing you initially wanted, but who cares? Because you're going to get some other good stuff. So this question is the relief is what I the relief is what I struggle with achieving. I know that the relief could bring me to where I want to be, but it's like I can't allow myself to get there. I just revert back to the dreaded disappointment. What if this doesn't work? Great comment and, and great question. So if you're having trouble getting to the relief, um, I would go general. First of all, would be my recommendation. Um, but I would separate relief from trying to manifest a specific thing. In the sense that like, you can do a Neville exercise or a Murphy exercise, and it's like you visualize for a couple of minutes and you really feel it and there's relief. It's like, oh, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. To get relief, if you have trouble achieving relief and relaxing, focus on relaxing. Focus on relief. Now that might sound much easier said than done. And in many ways, it seems like it is. But on a practical level, if you want relief, um, you can achieve it quickly by doing different things. I talk all about this in The Joy of Not Thinking. Um, in a different world, a parallel reality, this is what I would talk to more people about. I mean, this is my real passion. I love talking about this stuff. But you can shift your state and how you think very quickly, physiologically by doing something different. Like if you jump up and down and are singing at the top of your lungs or are beating your chest or do push-ups and like, you know, are, are making farting noises while you do push-ups. If you do that with hundred percent effort for a couple of minutes, you are going to shift how you think and you're going to get relief right away. Uh, if you need examples of that, you go, go to stopbeingserious.com. Uh, Stop being serious. This is this video series I did like a while ago, back in 2011, talking, showing you about movement. And if you move, you will physiologically change how you're thinking so much quickly that you'll get a sense of relief. Another way to do it really quickly is to talk out loud to yourself, honestly. Talk out loud to yourself. And you can beat yourself up if you want to, even like, why don't I feel more relief? What the heck? Get angry, do whatever you want, or be loving, be like, I love you, I love you. There's something talk, talk to yourself however you want. If you speak out loud to yourself for five or 10 minutes, you're going to start feeling relief about what's how you feel. And you can also do this about a specific desire you want. You can speak, Oh, I feel so stressed. I don't have this desire. I can't relax. There's dread. Da, da, da. Talk out loud to yourself. It shifts it. You start to get that feeling of relief. A lot of meditation exercises, likewise, are like you're very still and just relaxing, kind of like how we were grounding ourselves early in, at the beginning of this session. They help just generate that feeling of relief. Think about out-of-the-box ways to get relief if you feel like you can't get relief, and don't tie relief into manifesting. Your manifesting for specific things or things you want can be as simple as like writing them down, looking at them, and that's it. I mean, I, just keep them in mind, have them in a reminder. I want this, I want this, I want this. But don't worry about them the rest of the time. Don't worry about it. The more we worry about what we want to manifest, the slower it comes to us a lot of the time. Um, you know, another way to do it is what we've been talking about this whole session, which is like the dread and disappointment comes up. Okay, work with that. You feel the dread and disappointment. You feel like it's not going to happen. You don't, you, you don't feel the relief at all. Feel into that. Don't try to let go of that. Don't be like, I have to feel relief. Just feel it fully. Feel it fully. Feel it fully. Feel it fully. It's okay. Feel it fully. Feel it fully. Do that for 10, 20 minutes. Feel it fully. You're not going to die. Nothing's going to happen to you. It's just a feeling. It's going to start to shift. So again, chapter two, letting go. That's a good summation of how to just do that. Um, there's all these different ways, is my point, to feel relief, to get relief. Be out of the box about it. And don't, don't, don't tie it to your manifest. Don't be outcome dependent. If, if the outcome worries you, don't be outcome dependent. Just relax. 
either the outcome happens or it doesn't. And you're worried about it. Okay, that's all right. Whatever, I'm worried about it, but it's all right. I can still try my best just to relax into this moment regardless. Um, I hope that made some sense. If you if you read The Joy of Not Thinking or, or watch Stop Being Serious, I think you'll get a, a better sense of what I mean when I say that. Uh, yeah. Oh, good. It made sense. Excellent. Thank you. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Follow-up questions, just email me. Um, all right, folks, does anyone have any final comments? Otherwise, we're going to uh, end this session. This was great. Thank you again. Uh, yeah, again, Kate's uh, YouTube is Generate Magic. You can check out her channel if you like to subscribe to channels. It's a, it's a great one to subscribe to. Kate is one of the few people, as I said, who speaks about this stuff sanely. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody, again. And um, yeah, uh, until next time, have fun. Have fun. I'm glad we did this. This was a, I was a little bit concerned about what was going to come up because it was the SP topic, but I'm, I'm glad we did this. Um, all right, folks, I will have a recording of this. I, I got to see how I'm going to do it on YouTube, but I'll send you guys all a Zoom link to it tonight or tomorrow. Um, but it'll probably just go up in its entirety on YouTube as well. All right, until next time, if you have questions, just let me know and have fun. All right, have a, have a good one.